Hello, I am Raina the Witch of What the F*** and today I'm going to show you what not to do and some of what to do. Stay tuned. You may wonder why I'm showing you all this paint. Well, for good reason. I haven't painted in about six weeks at this point. Christmas, the holidays, and just getting distracted by things like resin and clay have taken me away from painting a bit. So this stuff is <laughs> what I've got, six weeks old. I refreshed it by adding some extra pouring medium and in some cases just straight up polycrylic to some of these and mixing them up. So my first mistake, my first fatal mistake was mixing them and then painting right away when they were completely full of bubbles. Don't do that. Here's a fail. It is a 12 inch wood round. The painting sucks. So, hey, let's breathe new life into it. I don't scrape, I just paint over. Mistake number two, using untested pillow paint. This is a Sherwin-Williams color sample that I found on the Oops shelf at the hardware store for a buck 25 and I figured I'll try it. Bad stuff, but I only lost a dollar and a half in most of my painting, but hey, you live and you learn, right? This painting is for a sunset challenge, as you can see the picture. Isn't it pretty? Five colors, then I made a cell activator. So the first color is actually Frankenstein. I have absolutely no idea what it is, how I got there. I call it Bruise Purple because I used it for a painting inspired by bruises. Sounds weird, I know, but that's coming up in a future video. Anyway, I had a kind of a dark gray metallic color. The closest I can say is this. <laughs> this is there is a little bit of this in there that I added, but it's not the whole thing. Anyway, this is Pebeo Studio Acrylics in iridescent blue-black. So here's a close approximation for my Frankenstein Payne's Gray. Sangria. This is a pigment by this little piggy. Pigments. I used two colors for the aqua because I couldn't decide which. The first one is Arteza Pearl in turquoise. The second is this little piggy in Lakeside. Generally, I tell you what I'm using for pouring mediums, but because these paints are so old and I kind of re-enlivened them, they're any mix of HGTV, Sherwin-Williams, Liquid Gold, Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish, Polycrylic, and probably in some of them, a little bit of the Valspar Ultra Deep base paint. Testing out some color theory, can't remember what electric orange and turquoise do together. Fortunately, orange is so incredibly bright it just took over the turquoise and I decided I could use that back to back after all. Master's Touch in fluorescent orange. Jacquard Pearl X in bright yellow. Bringing a few more colors back, a little bit more sangria and a little bit more bruised purple just to give it some more visual interest. It's actually really more of a navy than a purple. I don't know why I'm calling it purple. Probably because it started as kind of a purple. Didn't end as purple. It's a pretty color though, I like it. I wish I knew how I made it. <laughs> mistake number three. The worst mistake I made in this entire painting. <sighs> I over torched. I'm showing this to you in real time because I torched that much and I think you just need to know how much I did <laughs> to mess it up this badly. I haven't discovered that yet in this part of the video, but oh boy, do I ever. <laughs> My cell activator is Amsterdam Acrylic Permanent Red Violet Light. This is opaque. You can make a cell activator out of any opaque paint at all, any color you want. So it's just uh, for swipes, which is most of this, it's three parts. Floetrol, and I use Australian, but you can use US too with a little bit of wood conditioner. One part paint, there you go. I'm using this cool little milk frother to stir up all the floaties because in Australian Floetrol, it separates really easily the liquid from the solids in there. So you wanna shake it or stir it or uh, froth it before you use it and you'll get the best cells. Here's my handy dandy Yeho hairdryer. And this is that terrifying moment when I realized I scorched my paint. Ugh, it won't move. It's just kind of like rolling up in icky plastic filmy tendrils of horror and terror. <sighs> Lordy. I thought about breaking my own rule so many times during this painting. My rule, no scraping. I don't scrape. I let things dry and if they really suck, as you can see, I paint over them, but I don't scrape. Sometimes I feel like you can pull something back from the brink. Sometimes you can't. That's when you paint over it. But 
I'm anti-scraping. If you want to see a big rant on that, check out my video called Dragon Fire. Boy, do I get on a soapbox. Anyway, I am trying my best to coax anything out of this at this point. The pink cell activator is looking awesome. The colors together blend beautifully. But the fact that they are scorched and acting kind of like saran wrap on acid is not ideal. I'm adding a little bit extra pillow paint around the edges to try to get it to disperse and move off. Weird, totally scorched my paint. This is where I made mistake number four. I did not spin it hard enough because I didn't have a big box to protect the paint from flying everywhere. So I just kind of gave it these little wussy baby spins that just did almost nothing. So yeah, mistake number four. If you want to spin well, don't be afraid of getting paint everywhere. So protect yourself. Use protection. Lubrication and protection. It's kind of amazing how much fluid art is like sex ed, isn't it? Mistake number five. I don't know when to stop. Seeing this right now, I could have used that negative space and I actually could have made this look pretty good without adding anything additional if I just maybe softened some of those edges where the pillow paint got blown over the colored paint. I could have done that with a scalpel or, I'm sorry, I can't talk today, a spatula, or I could have done it the way I blow it out with a straw. There's many ways I could have softened the edges and really enjoyed that nice negative space, but I don't know when to stop, so I kept going. Another helpful tip, save dead pens, take out the insides if you can, and they make fabulous usable straws. And uh, saving the environment just a little bit, I mean, you'll eventually throw it away too, but uh, at least you didn't use straws in the meantime. Oh, look at me. <laughs> Mistake number six are we at? I didn't peel any of the paint off of my torch, so as I went to torch it, a big chunk of paint fell off into my painting. <laughs> so, stop, get the piece of paint out, put it away. I, you know, at this point, I'm just kind of like, eh, let's see what happens. The paint is now so solidified that the hair dryer, even on high, is not moving it. So, this is what I've got to work with, folks. I feel like this is the point when any sane painter would have given up and just said, mm, we're gonna start over. There's maybe some merit to scraping. I'm still not gonna do it though. I'm standing by my guns. Mm. What am I doing with the straw, you may ask? I am trying to soften out those really rough edges. It's, you saw when I took the hairdryer to the paint, it kind of blew the pillow up over the colors and, didn't make for such a nice effect. So I am trying to fix that. And the straw at this point is working a heck of a lot better than the hair dryer just because again, the paint is cellophane. Go me. Oh, another little wussy spin. What is up with the wussy spins? Don't do that. Spin hard, spin like you mean it. Don't spin like that. Bad, you know, bad. I really wish I would have stopped at this point too because dang. That's a lot prettier. <laughs> Tilting for my life on this folks one. Tilting for my life on this one, folks. <laughs> Mistake number seven, being a klutz and dropping my pen right on my painting. Is anybody surprised? I don't think so. Blow, blow, blow me away. Remember when I said I never know when to stop? Well, I have decided to add two blooms in those negative spaces. Up close, it was kind of ugly. Far away, it was like, it was really not that bad. You know, it's kind of like Monet. <laughs> I'm not ripping on Monet, he was a fabulous artist. Anyway, so I'm adding blooms here. The pillow paint is not actually pillow paint, it is actually pouring medium. That is just my standard uh, HGTV and Joe Sonia pouring medium. I still have a lot of the HGTV left, so fortunate me, but I poured that directly on and then I'm adding the paint in the um, reverse layer of the spectrum from kind of the navy to the turquoise to the sangria to the orange to the yellow and then my pink cell activator again, which you will see I swish again because 
To get the best cells, it's important to have everything very much stirred up since the sedimentation settles. You don't want to settle for settled paint. Froth that CA. Drop it on. I actually could have left it, you know, once I put this other second dot on there, it almost looks like a very odd octopus with its two crazy eyes. That would have been a bad idea. Here I am blowing it out. You will see that uh, I blew it. <sighs> right there. Yeah, I, I blew that, but that's okay. At this point in the painting, I was a little Je ne sais quoi. Unfazed. I don't want to say given up, but I was completely resigned to whatever outcome was going to come out of it. I, at this point, had detached and just decided to see, can I save it? Will I save it? I don't know. Keep watching. If you enjoy my painting shenanigans, please look in the box below. I've got links to my social media, my Instagrams, my website, my Patreon, all that sort of thing. So be awesome. Check that out. Also, please like and subscribe. That encourages me to make more shenanigan videos for you. Uh, everybody likes my really weird sense of humor, right? I like to thank. Encourage me. So uh, drop a comment, like, subscribe. So subscribe, make my day. Actually, as I was painting this, I just crossed a thousand subscribers. So to all of you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You do give me that extra impetus to keep going, even when I completely fail. But it's kind of fun to show you the failures, right? Because you all fail too. Admit it, you do. I'm now applying cell activator directly to a playing card and swiping in certain places. Again, just to rid myself of those ugly edges. Mistake number seven, eight, using the pouring medium like it was a pillow paint. So after this dried, those spots where the pillow paint, I'm sorry, where the pouring medium was exposed are yellow now, kind of a gross yellow too. Like the kind of yellow that like white walls become when a smoker lives in a place and they kind of get that tobacco-y film on them. I'm using the word film a lot while I'm filming. No oh, meta. And now I futz with it. Futz, futz, futz. Spin, tilt, and I futz. And I futz some more. I should call myself the witch of what the futz. Not a bad idea. Oh look, I'm blowing it again. You know me, cover the edges. The black of the former painting was showing through. I couldn't deal with that. There's no blackness. I'm not gonna have black on the edges. Bad form. And here I'm adding yet another. This is a swipe this time, same order as the two blooms that I just added from the dark to the light. And this time I put cell activator directly on my spatula. I used a lot of tools in this one. We've got the spatula, the straw, the frother, the playing card, the cake spinner. My own bullshit. Oh look, and one more swipe up in the corner. Sorry, part of this is off camera. You know what I'm doing. You're an intelligent human being, you can tell. I was really just having a lot of fun at this point, like a kid in a sandbox. So to recap, what did we learn today? Well, we have learned, don't use untested pillow paint if you want your painting to actually turn out as anything good. Secondly, if you're going to use very, very old paints and re-wet them with pouring medium or, or varnish, let them settle. <laughs> let those bubbles pop for like a day before you attempt to paint with them. Because then you can avoid mistake number three, which is over torching your paint and turning it into a gross film that does not move under the hairdryer. Number five, make sure that your tools like your torch are clean. So when you go to do things like that, you don't drop old clumps of paint directly in your artwork. Don't be a klutz and drop your pen. <laughs> if you're gonna spin, make sure that you have an area to spin in so you can really give it hell and you don't do these terrible little spins that I did that resulted in nearly nothing. Silicone is your friend. It keeps things where you want them to be. So a, a layer between your spinner and your painting is a good idea. And eight, don't use straight pouring medium as your pillow paint unless you're going for that smoker chic yellow color. Things to do. Have fun. Don't scrape. Instead, use it as a time to experiment. 
So if you're like on the verge of, oh, this sucks, I'm just gonna get rid of it, back off and think, well, what can I try that I've been thinking of trying? Because if you're already about to be on the verge of scraping, why don't you use the opportunity to try things? Get a different color of paint, mix some weird stuff, just have fun with it. Use it as sandbox time. Do have fun using different colors, cell activators. Uh, Amsterdam opaques work wonderfully, and I know that there are many others that do too. Do practice detaching yourself from the outcome. Fluid art is unpredictable, and there's gonna be times that it just doesn't go the way you want it to go. But all in all, I actually, I ended up liking this one. I think I may take the round and once it's cured, resin it and put it in the bottom of a tray. I think that that would look pretty cool. I may actually also build a clock because I've never built a clock before and I feel like this is a pretty cool backdrop for one. I'm about to take you in for some close-ups, but before I do, let me say thank you. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned some things to do and not to do and that you will like, subscribe and come back in the future. Au revoir. I love the lacing of this pink cell activator. It really made some cool patterns. Here's the place where I swiped it. And look at all those colors. Look at how they blend right there. That is an absolutely beautiful mix of colors. There you can see a little bit of the exposed pouring medium, which turned a little bit yellow, but uh, we'll work with it. There's enough yellow in the piece that I think it'll work just fine, especially after it's resined. There's some more beautiful areas where the pink lacing really shines through. All in all, to me, this looks like a sunset colored fire. It's a little explosive, it's very fiery, and I do like it. At first I was like, oh, this is such a loss, a total loss, but no, I like it. And it dried kind of 3D, it's got crevices and valleys in it, but that's really gonna play well when I cover it in resin too. Hopefully once I finish this, I'll put this on Instagram, but knowing how I work, it'll probably be three or four months before it's up there. <laughs> and heck, maybe I'll even do a video finishing it, especially if I decide to build the clock. Let me know what you think, or you know, if it's not nice, then don't. <laughs> I'm fragile, but I'm not that fragile. Have a great day, have fun painting.